students welcome to yet another interesting video so in today's class we are going to be talking about remainder theorem so before i start with it there is an important update it's regarding the byju's mini learning program that's absolutely free but it is a limited period offer so to avail this you have to use the code yt free all in caps over here now let me tell you what are benefits we are getting here so you can take three classes absolutely free of cost and you can choose the class timings as per your convenience and for whatever subjects you want to take the class for obviously you are getting a dual teacher advantage here one on one guidance from the personal mentor live interactive classes and after class assignments and assessments will also be shared so link for this is given in the description please do go check that out now i'm sure that all of you have joined the telegram channel so many benefits we are getting here session updates you get there session pdfs are shared over there quizzes homework questions and yes revision questions as well link for this as well is given in the description below please do join it all right let's not waste any more time here let's get started so when we talk about the division of a polynomial right so obviously when we think about a polynomial we feel that it's going to be difficult right division of polynomials is going to be a little tricky but let's first understand i mean we already know how to divide numbers right so how do we do that in case of numbers let's suppose if i have to divide 56 with 5 i'm going to do 5 times 1 that's 5 right so zero is the remainder then we take 6 down so we have 5 times 1 that's 5 and once you subtract this what are you going to get you will be getting positive 1 that's the remainder so i know that this is the dividend this is the i'm sorry this is the divisor this is the dividend this is the quotient and this is the remainder that's simple in a similar manner we divide the polynomials as well So now let's quickly recall how do we divide the polynomials actually. So first we will try to understand the remainder theorem used by using an animated story, where a divisor is actually depicts a person with a knife who cuts an apple, and dividend depicts an apple over here. Now this person cuts the apple, so quotient is that part of the apple which is fully cut by the person. Like we can see over here, and remainder is the remaining part of the apple. so remainder is basically we can see that it is half and this uh, here over here each part is 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 which makes actually 1 by 2 right so if you calculate all this it's going to be again the whole apple we have so here we have understood this remainder theorem with the help of this story now let's quickly take a look at some of the conditions for remainder theorem so the first condition is this is nothing but that's actually the division algorithm that you have already learned about that's dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder so here px over here if you see that's nothing but that's the dividend gx is the divisor qx is the quotient and rx is the remainder now few conditions are there if remainder if rx is 0 either you get remainder zero or degree of rx that means degree of remainder is lesser than degree of gx that means degree of divisor we can say that px that means dividend is divided by gx it gives Q qx as quotient and rx as remainder so what i'm trying to tell you here is whenever you dividing polynomials a polynomial with another polynomial how do we know that the finally it has been ended let's suppose if you are getting zero as a remainder you know that division is done but let's suppose you're not getting zero in that case you have to see that degree of rx if it is lesser than the degree of gx that means divisor the question ends there all right and over here one more thing you need to remember that the degree of px that means the degree of px by that i mean here the degree of the dividend it has to be greater than equals to the degree of qx these are the few small small things you need to keep in mind and degree of px when i'm saying degree of px has to be greater than equals to 1 and as i said degree of rx is to be less than degree of gx so these are the three conditions that you need to keep in mind all right keeping this in mind now let's see how we can divide polynomials so division of polynomials we can see here like we have 3x square plus x minus 1 that's the dividend that means px x minus 1 is the divisor that's gx so first of all we see that it has to be written in the standard form this we have already learned before right so we are just going to quickly see this so x over here what shall i multiply x with so that i get 3x square that's going to be 3x so that's going to be positive 3x square this 3x will be multiplied with minus 1 also that's minus 3x i'll write it down here now i'm going to change the signs so here it's a positive sign so that changes to negative here it's a negative sign so i'll put positive sign over here plus 3x square negative 3x square cancels out positive x and positive 3x now 3x would be considered positive not negative right so what do we get here over here we have positive 4x and we will take minus 1 down 
Now, what we will do here is simply we know that we have got 4x minus 1. So, I will multiply this x with 4. So, I get 4x, right? So, I will take plus 4. This plus 4 will be multiplied with minus 1 also. That's minus 1. Once I change the signs, I am subtracting it. You see, this is minus, this is plus. This gets cancelled out. Minus 1 and positive 4 is positive 3. That's the remainder. That's Rx. Now, you can see that. The degree of Rx, it's a constant polynomial, that's 0. And degree of Gx is 1, that's a linear polynomial. So question ends here. Once the degree of remainder is lesser than the degree of divisor. This is something that you need to keep in mind. So that's how, that was a very simple example of how do we divide the polynomials, right? Now, let's move ahead. So here we saw how division of polynomials take place, right? So this is the divisor, as I said. This is the quotient. This is the divin, uh, dividend and that's the remainder. Simple, right? This is something that we have been doing for the past few years. And we have been using the same division algorithm. Now, let's try out a few questions to get a better understanding. Find the remainder when fx is divided by gx. This is the fx, that's the dividend. It is divided by this divisor. I'm using the long division method here. So, first I'll see that it has to be in the standard form. Now, 2x squared, if I multiply that with x, what I'm going to get 2x cubed. So, that's what we have here. Now, this x would be multiplied with minus 1 also, we get minus x. So, we are writing like terms together and we change the signs. This is going to be negative, that's positive. So, this gets cancelled out, minus 5x plus x, that's going to give us what? That is going to give us minus 4x. I'll take minus 4x squared down over here and minus 3 as well down. Now, what shall I multiply 2x square with so that I get minus 4x square? That's simple. It's going to be minus 2. So we have minus 4x square minus 2 times minus 1. That's positive 2. Let's change the signs over here. What do we get? This gets cancelled out. So we have minus 4x and minus 5 because minus 3 and minus 2. This 2 would be considered negative now, not positive. Now this will end here. Reason being, you can see that it's linear. Its degree is 1. Here the degree is 2. So degree of remainder is lesser than the degree of divisor. The question ends there. Right? So this is the divisor. This is the quotient. This is your dividend and that's your remainder. All right. Now, till now we talked about the remainder theorem. In a similar manner, we will learn about the factor theorem using the same animated characters that we saw earlier for the remainder theorem. So here we can see that this Px will denote the apple which will be divided by x minus a, that's the divisor depicted by the person having a knife in his hand to cut the apple. And after cutting the apple, what do we get? We get the quotient, right? We get the quotient as the fully cut apple and we get the remainder as 0, which is denoting p of a. What does this mean now? So, over here, what we are trying to show here is, this apple is already cut, right? Completely cut. So, remainder over here is 0. That means I can say that the apple is fully cut. It is that means the divisor over here, I can say that in the mathematical terms, if Px is a polynomial of degree n greater than equals to 1, either it is linear or it is quadratic, cubic, cubic, its degree would be either 1 or more than 1. And a over here is any real number. What I can say here is that, that P of a would be equal to 0 if x minus a is a factor of Px. What does this mean? I know that initially it looks a little complicated. Let me explain you. So factor is something, when we talk about the factor of a polynomial, it is that real number uh, after putting its value in the polynomial, the entire value of the polynomial becomes zero. That means, let's take a look at the proof. By remainder theorem, we know that Px is equal to x minus a times qx plus Pa. Now we know that Pa is equal to zero. If remainder over here is zero, that means Px would be equal to x minus a times qx, right? And x minus a, that means, is a factor of px because on replacing x with a, I'm getting the entire value of the polynomial as 0. So I can say that x minus a is a factor of px. That means px would be equal to x minus a times qx plus 0. So if x is equal to a, that means p of a would be equal to a minus a times qa equals to 0. That's what factor theorem is. So in a nutshell, what we can say is here is that this is the, this is what the remainder theorem says, right? This is what remainder theorem tells us. So once, if this value is 0, we get this. This is showing that this is the factor for this dividend. But now if this is the factor, that means if I equate this to 0, what I'm going to get? I'm going to get x minus a equal to 0, that's equals to a. If I replace x with a in the polynomial, I get the entire value as 0. And that's what factor is, right? So here, a is nothing, but that's the factor for this polynomial. All right, let's try out a question on this. Using factor theorem, determine whether gx is equal to x plus 1 is a factor of px is equal to 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x minus 1. So what I'm going to do here is simply I'm using the factor theorem. First, since this is the divisor, if I equate this equals to 0, I get 
x is equal to minus 1. So, 0 of this is going to be minus 1. This is the polynomial. Let's replace x with minus 1 in the entire polynomial. So, once you substitute that, what are you going to get? You're going to get the value over here, right? This is what? Negative 2, positive 2 cancels out. 1 and 1 cancels out. So, what do we get here? We see that the entire value over here is going to be 0, right? This entire value is 0. So, we have, we can say that x plus 1 is a factor of 2x cubed plus x square minus 2x minus 1. So, I can say over here that p of minus 1 is actually equals to 0. That's what factor theorem tells us. So, I hope that whatever we discuss in this session, it is crystal clear in your mind. And if you have any doubts, you can share your doubts in the comment section below. And I have a homework question for you as well. So, which of the following is the factor of the equation x square x cube plus 2x square plus 2x plus 1? Four options you can see here. You can let us hear your, your answers in the comment section below. Don't worry, we have got you covered. And please like, share and subscribe if you feel that these sessions are actually helping you. They are actually fruitful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.